Hey there, Jake Dempsey, CEO and co-founder of Project Broadcast. In this video, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper and talk about our Drip Campaigns feature. Remember, you can always visit training.projectbroadcast.com for additional training modules. And if you have questions about Project Broadcast, how to get your account set up, or even about the features of Project Broadcast, feel free to email us at support at projectbroadcast.com. Let's jump into Project Broadcast and take a look at creating a Drip Campaign. You can find the drip campaigns or the campaigns area in Project Broadcast under the automation section. So under the automation section, we'll click campaigns. And I'm going to click a drip campaign. Uh, and we're going to create one. For this video, let's you know pretend we want to do a 222 style customer follow-up campaign. I want a message to go out two days, two weeks, and two months. Um, when a new customer is added to this campaign. So I'm going to call this my 222 um, customer follow-up. And I select that it's a drip campaign. Now, in a drip campaign, every message has a day delay and a time of day. So we're going to go into our mes drip message area and click manage. And then we're going to create our first message in our drip campaign by tapping the plus. So I'm going to call this my two-day message. Now, remember, your content is going to obviously be much better than mine and probably include emojis and images. I'm just going to put in the message area um, two-day message just so we can know that this is the two-day message that's going to get sent out. We're going to make sure to use Eva. We want to make sure we use dynamic fields. So, you know, if I were actually crafting this message, I'd probably say something like, hey, insert dynamic field, select their first name, right? And then I would say, like, you know, wanted to follow up on your purchase. So thankful you um, are um, participating in my business. Right. Now, again, your follow-up message may be something totally different in terms of content. Include emojis. Probably have also have a graphic. We'll just use this as our, our two-day message. Now, if it's a two-day message, I want to go two days after. I add someone to this campaign. So the day delay is going to be two, two days after. I want you to schedule this message. And then time of day. Again, you want to think about when you are sending a message, be cognizant of your time zone and the time zone of your customer. So, um, you know, I'm in the central time zone. So I just got to be careful. You know, if I were to schedule this, for example, uh, at 621 a.m. and someone lived on the west coast they'd be getting that message at like 4 20 in the morning right so we don't want that so i'm going to set this message to go out at 10 uh 19 a.m now one of the things you'll you'll hear me kind of give as advice to people is i very rarely schedule messaging to go out at like exact times like 10 o'clock or 10 30 or 11 o'clock i like to use odd times because uh it, it it, it helps create that perception for the person that's going to get this message that uh, it's actually you sending the message. So if the message came in exactly at 10 o'clock and then the next message came in exactly at 10 o'clock, then, you know, they may get the perception that it's not a person sending them the message. So small tip, use kind of odd times when scheduling uh, your times. Um, so I've got my, my two day message. This is the content I want to use. I want to go out two days after I add the person to the campaign and I'm going to send it at 10, 19 a.m. And I'm going to click the check mark. So now I've got my two day message. It's just showing me that this is the two day message. Um, I'm going to hit the little back arrow here to go back to the list of messages. And I only have a two day message. And I'm going to add another message. So I'm going to now create a two week message. And this uh, message, obviously, use dynamic fields. Whatever it is in terms of the cadence of your business, maybe the two-week message is their product should have already shipped, or maybe you're following up on how they like the product. But you know, at any rate, you're going to have some type of follow-up. Um, I'm just going to put this here as a placeholder follow-up message for week two. Right? Again, your content is going to be much more robust. Now, if it's a two-week follow-up message, then the day delay is going to be 14 days, and the time of day. I'm going to make this one 11, 24 a.m. Again, I don't want it to go out at the same time as the previous message, and I don't want it to be an exact, you know, Z, you know 11 o'clock, 11, 15, 11, 30, whatever. So we've got a two-day message. 
a two week message and I'm just going to create a two month message. So the name's going to be two month message. Now, the only person that sees this uh, name is me. So I'm just going to put follow up, if I can spell, <laughs> follow up uh, two month message here. And again, your message is going to have much more useful content than my little sample content. Make sure to use Ava uh, when you write your message to either condense it, make it more formal, check spelling and grammar. Um, as you saw in the Ava video, there's a lot of tools here that you can use to uh, help craft a better message. Uh, and then also the message strength feature is going to help you uh, in case there are items in your message that we know are, are, are known spam triggers. So look for those as well. And remember, up to 1,024 characters, can you have emojis uh, and include an image? So two month delay message means the day delay is going to be 60 days. And this one we will send at 11.09. Uh, so we've crafted this customer follow-up campaign, a 222 customer follow-up campaign. Let's look at what happens when I use this campaign. So here's my campaign. There are no contacts in this campaign. Now there's a couple way to get contacts into a campaign. You can go directly to the campaign and click add contacts. That's one way to add contacts. Um, and I can just select a contact and add them. Uh, and actually let's do that. I'll show you what, what, what happens here. So I'm gonna add uh, this contact. Now, again, when I'm adding contacts, I can use the tag filter and find all contacts in a particular tag. I can use the advanced search feature to find contacts based on any of the fields on contacts, including the custom fields. Um, or I can onesie twosie kind of select contacts like I'm doing here. I'm just going to select this one contact and click add. Now, what should happen is the system should schedule the two day message, the two week message and the two month message for me automatically. So in order to validate that, we're going to hop over to the schedule. You'll find that in the automation area in your left hand navigation. And if we look at the schedule, we can see that two days from now, uh, I'm getting my two day message and that's two weeks from now, 14 days from now, I'm going to get my two week message. And then 60 days from now, I'm getting my two month message. So, you know, the system has kind of taken, uh, taking the, you know, the burden of scheduling these messages for me to my customers. Now I'm still responsible for if they respond to these messages to, you know, have conversation back and forth with them via the chat tab. But the fact that I've got this 222 customer follow-up campaign allows me to add customers to this campaign and know that the kind of base follow-up is being done for me automatically. So as I said, you can add people to the contacts um, here. Now I'm gonna remove this contact uh, just so we can show you how you can do it in another area. So I'm going to remove this contact from the campaign. If I go back to the schedule, we'll see, and I'm going to refresh it, that there are no more messages because I removed the contact, right? So when I remove the contact from the campaign, any future messages that have not yet been sent uh, due to the campaign are going to get removed from the schedule as well. So the other way you can add people to or add contacts to campaigns is under the contacts area. If you are looking at the contact detail screen for any of your contacts, there's an area for campaigns. So you can add a campaign to a contact here. You can also, while in chat with a contact, if I'm in chat with a contact, um, I can click the three dots here and go to manage campaigns and add the campaign to the contact here. I can also leverage the keywords feature in Project Broadcast uh, on any keyword, you'll see an area called join campaigns. And if I add a campaign to this keyword, when someone texts me the keyword, so in this case, you know, the keywords VIP, when someone texts me the keyword, Project Broadcast will automatically add that contact to a campaign that you have listed in this join campaigns. So there's a number of ways to get contacts added to your campaigns. For this particular type of campaign, a drip style campaign, it's very useful for things like uh, customer follow-up. It's also useful for prospecting. You may create a campaign that, you know, puts contacts in the campaign and maybe messages them over the course of 30 or 60 days, 90 days, whatever that cadence is for you, where each message is really about trying to convert them from a, a cold lead to a warm lead or a warm lead to a hot prospect. Um, and you'll find this, this cool feature on drip campaigns called remove contact on reply. So let's just talk about what that is. 
I would not use this feature on a follow-up campaign because I want the customer to get every one of the messages in this drip campaign. Now, let's say I had a prospecting campaign where what I'm really trying to do is to get the contact to engage with me and interact with me. And really the, the campaign is there to nudge them. Maybe it's a drip campaign with like a one day message, seven day, 14 day, 30 day, 45 day, 60 day, 90 day, right? I'm just trying to nudge them as a prospect to kind of create a, a real conversation with them. Well, well, let's just say you had that campaign with like a, you know, one day, seven day, 14 day, whatever. And they respond back after the very first message. Well, if they respond after the very first message, you don't want Project Broadcast to continue nudging them to interact with you. So the remove contact on reply is a feature you can turn on on a drip campaign. And what it says is when a contact responds to me, remove them from this campaign. So it's very useful when it comes to creating campaigns that are based on prospecting. Uh, drip campaigns, again, are kind of your bread and butter of campaigns, and you'll use them a lot, again, for things like follow-up, prospecting, product education. Um, you can even use it for, like, team onboarding. It's at, at the core, if you want to send a series of message or a series of messages where each message has a day delay and a time of day, and that could be two messages or 100 messages that you have kind of in this series, um, that's where you want to look at using a drip campaign.